Thank you very much. I think it's uh, very clear for us to understand and remember how the economy here grew and uh, became much more positive and, pro and progressive during the Clinton administration, during those, uh, those eight years. The, uh, the deficit that uh, Clinton inherited when he went into office was dramatically reduced and brought back a surplus when uh, he left office. And uh, when he left office, the uh, national debt was in the neighborhood of about a little over $5 trillion. By the time the next president, George W. Bush, left, the deficit was about $10.7 trillion. So it's important for us not to have the same kind of experience now that uh, we are trying to get pushed to us by the opposition here on the other side of the aisle. The most critical challenge that we face as a country, of course, is the need to create new jobs. If Congress hopes to get the economy moving at the right pace, we're going to have to take this challenge for job creation very seriously. The question is, what should we do and what should we not do to reform government so that we can better compete in the world economy? and yield strong, sustainable, long-term growth and prosperity. After a hundred days, Republicans have failed to put forward a single plan to create jobs. Instead, they've laid out a budget plan that shows us exactly what not to do. We must remember how we got into this budget mess in the first place. While my friends on the other side would like to pretend that our economic woes began the very second that President Obama took his hand off the Bible and was sworn into office, we know that that's not the truth at all. In fact, it was quite the opposite. The things that he did as president were positive for the economy, and we're seeing that today. We're seeing the economy growing. We're seeing unemployment declining. We're seeing employment going up all of that as a positive effect of the actions of this president. My friends on the other side pushing this budget are the same people who carried President George W. Bush's agenda through Congress and in doing so nearly doubled our national debt, as I said, from about 5.7 trillion to 10.7 trillion over the eight years of the Bush presidency. We need to make sure that they're not able to do that again. They did so then by recklessly lowering taxes on the wealthy with the promise that doing so would create jobs and strengthen our economy. Well, we know that neither of those happened. In fact, just the opposite occurred. They did so by passing a prescription drug plan that is a major giveaway to the pharmaceutical industry without finding a way to pay for it. And they did so by taking us into Iraq under false pretenses and committing us to what will ultimately be several trillions of dollars. Now we are seeing economic inequality at record levels. The wealthiest 10% of the population here in the United States of America receives nearly half of all income in our country and the richest 1% has seen its share of the national income increase by nearly 10%, and they are now at about 35% of all income. All of that increasing for the richest and declining for working people across this country. This trend has consequences, and it is no coincidence that the last time we saw inequality at this level was during the Great Depression in the 1930s. But instead of working to correct this problem, the House Republican Proposal acts as a huge wealth transfer program from the working class Americans to the rich. Overall, two thirds of the cuts the Republicans propose take dead aim at working class Americans to lower their economy and lower their economic conditions. The Republicans' budget plan eliminates Medicare, forcing seniors to buy insurance in the private marketplace, 
using a coupon that barely covers a fraction of the cost of care. It cuts food stamps, Pell Grants, and low-income housing. And at the same time, our friends across the aisle here, their plan would give away $2.9 trillion in tax cuts to the hugest, biggest corporations and to the wealthiest Americans. This is the exact wrong approach, and it will severely damage our economy, hurt the middle class, and impoverish senior citizens. Let's take a closer look at how this plan hurts seniors. Their budget eliminates Medicare. It eliminates Medicare and creates a new voucher program that would saddle seniors with a large portion of their health care costs. They would then be more responsible for it, and the whole health care system would decline. The Republican budget also makes prescription drugs more expensive for seniors. The health care law we passed last year is gradually eliminating the gaps in prescription drug coverage. The Republican plan undoes this essential reform, forcing seniors to pay out of pocket. The Republican budget also threatens to make nursing home care unaffordable by cutting $771 billion from Medicaid over a 10-year period. Medicaid currently covers nearly half of all long-term care costs, and we know what would happen if their plan was to be successful. All of that would be essentially eliminated. The Republican budget also cuts $10 billion from Social Security's administrative budget, which will impact service to seniors. What this plan does to America's seniors is absolutely unacceptable. But the worst part of it is that while they cut Medicare and Medicaid, and they cut prescription drug coverage and the Social Security Administration, they also cut taxes on the very wealthy, reducing substantially the amount of taxes that the wealthiest people in this country pay, while at the same time raising taxes on everyone else. Now, 10 years ago, the Conservative Heritage Foundation projected that in 2011, 1.6 million more Americans would be working as a result of the Bush tax cuts. They were wrong. They were wrong then, and they are wrong now. We know what happened then, just the opposite of what they predicted. The Republican debate isn't about good policy or the facts. It's about a dogmatic approach to governing and doing what's best for the very rich. Doing what's best for the very rich, regardless of how it affects everyone else, who are the main promoters of the economy. Working class people, middle income people, are the people who drive the economic growth here in America. If they're forced to decline their economic conditions, then the whole economy of this country declines. All of that is, is needed to be understood, and the actions that they are proposing must be avoided. Even President Reagan's budget director, budget director rather, David, David Stockman, recently said that he finds it, and I quote what he said, he finds it unconscionable that the Republican leadership, faced with a $1.5 trillion deficit, could possibly believe that good public policy is to maintain tax cuts for the top 2% of the population. We know that that isn't the case. We know that is going to be just the opposite. We know that tax cuts for the wealthiest making the wealthiest people in this country even wealthier and driving down the economy of the working people is going to have a deadly effect on the economic circumstances across this country. Tax rates are now lower than they were, even under President Reagan. And yet the Republicans are actually proposing to cut taxes, again for the very rich, lower the corporate rate, and keep special tax earmarks for big oil tax earmarks for big oil, 
which is now going to be one of the highest growing economic aspects of this country that we have to deal with. Tax earmarks for big oil and for the biggest companies. And the biggest companies particularly that export American jobs overseas. Continuing to give tax cuts to those economic companies that take jobs out of the United States and exports them to other countries. What a big mistake that is in the context of rescinding this economy. Overall, the Republican budget plan for 2012 will not balance the budget, and while it does not balance the budget, it eliminates Medicare by replacing it with a private voucher program that will make it impossible for seniors to get health care. It also provides huge new tax breaks for the wealthy while cutting key investments in our economy. All of these proposals that we are facing here are clearly deadly. If they were to be successful, the economic circumstances that is now just getting better in this economy as a result of the actions by the Obama administration would be reversed and it would be reversed dramatically and we would see a downslide in the economic circumstances here in our country. We need to oppose this effectively and we need to have a policy that is going to focus its attention on working class people, on the need to create more jobs and to create more jobs more effectively.